Hey everyone, it's Greg. It's Unbreakable Spirits and it is Monday, August the 7th. And uh, I hope everybody had a good weekend. I sure did. I got to tell you about my Saturday, especially. Um, it was great. I went to the Phillies game. And uh, first of all, it was photo night at the Phillies. That's always fun. They haven't had a photo night uh, for a couple of years now because of the pandemic. So it was really great to go back for photo night. You know what's nice about photo night? Not only can you take close-up pictures of your favorite players, but you can, but it's a reminder that these guys are people too. You know, they have feelings and they, they, uh, they're just like everybody else, you know? Uh, by the way, if you go to my Twitter account, which is Wheeling Greg, you could see some of the photos I took. I had my arm around Kyle Schwarber there. He's a really nice guy. Uh, took a picture, a selfie with uh, Bryson Stott. Uh, I tried to get a good picture of Alec Bone, but he kept moving around. Poor guy. Everybody was screaming at him, especially the girls. You know, uh, he's a tall guy, too, let me tell you. When you're next to him, he is tall. Um, but uh, it's got to be uh, something for a guy like that who is what he just turned 27 the other day uh, to be a great ball player and to be so popular, you know? I mean, these guys are rock stars, the Phillies are. I have never heard, I've been to quite a few photo nights in my time, and I have never heard it so loud. And uh, people screaming for these players, you know, they come out of the dugout and uh, start walking down the field and people are literally screaming for them, you know, um, they're rock stars. But uh, all the players were very nice. Bryce Harper was nice. Uh, the only people I really did get to meet were the owner, John Middleton. He was there. He was out there. But he did come around our side of the field. Uh, Aaron Noah apparently was out there, but I didn't get to see him either, and uh, a few others. But the uh, the players were really cool. The uh, coaches and the managers were very nice. The manager, um, so it was really an unforget unforgettable uh, experience. And uh, just the other fans around me too were really cool. So. Uh, so I'm looking forward to the, uh, next year for photo night. Just a little tip. If uh, they don't have photo night designated on the calendar until later in the season, but they generally have it anywhere between the middle of July and early August. So if you see a Saturday home game that starts at 6 o'clock, that's probably photo night. So uh, just a heads up. I mean, there were tons of people on the field, uh, tons of people. And it was a sold out game. Now to the game. Uh, it was a great game. Uh, the Phillies came back a few times and they won the game nine to six. So it was an exciting game. They played Kansas City and Kansas City was riding a seven game winning streak up until Saturday. Uh the game had everything. It had home runs uh, by Harper, Castellanos, and Turner. And uh, it was just a fun, exciting game. Uh, I got to say, Trey Turner, God bless him. He came through Saturday night. And you know, it takes a big man to admit when he's wrong. And I was wrong. I, uh, you know, when the fans gave him a standing ovation on uh Friday night when the Phillies came back to town, uh, I thought, eh, it's a little phony, it's a little artificial, you know. And, uh, but I could see now where it may have helped his confidence. Uh, you know, I think the extra time he put in to his credit during the week in the batting cage certainly helped. But I think the fans' support being behind, showing that we've got your back, we're still with you, did help. 
I think it did help his confidence. And uh, so I I was wrong. So I apologize to the fans and the Trey Turner. But, uh, you know, when he hit the home run on Saturday uh, and he got a, a standing ovation again, which he earned, I it was just felt so much better, you know, because it was spontaneous, it was unexpected, and it was real. So uh, I was just happy to be there. It was a special game. It's one of those games you have. You have those games once in a while where uh, it's it's a very special game that stands out in a season. And I've been lucky to be to a few of those games, but. Uh, uh, this one stood out, and I think this one will be remembered for a long time to come. So let's hope the Phillies keep it up, and uh, we'll see what happens again tonight. Um, today is also a special day, and it's uh, 10 years today that my mom died. And I just wanted to say a few words about her. Um, she was a, a really sweet lady. Uh, uh, of course, when I was a kid and uh, I was, uh, you know, breaking bones all the time and in cast and uh, she did everything for me. She uh, fed me, uh, helped me get dressed. I mean, she was just uh, the greatest. She was so sweet. Uh, she prayed hard for me and supported me and encouraged me. And, uh, you know, she just, uh, she was just the best all through my life. And uh, now she was funny. She was really funny. She had a really wit, wit about her. And uh, I'll always remember the, you know, different things that stand out, you know. I miss her food. You know, she was ethnic. She made ethnic food. She was Slovak, Polish. Uh, Hungarian. She could speak all those languages, by the way. So if she didn't want, if she was on the phone or she didn't want us to hear what she was talking about, she would switch into Slovak mode. <laughs> and she would, uh, I picked up a few words over the years, but I can't speak it. But uh, so she was incredible that way. And so she made all that good ethnic food, you know, Phil Cabbage, a lot, a lot, blah, blah, blah. Halushki, halupki, uh, pierogies. Um, she made all that, you know, homemade. And uh, so I missed that too. And uh, just special. And she used to love to cook and love to bake. She, she did that. I mean, she was for her family, you know. She had six kids. And that's what she lived for. She, uh, you know, she, she was a nurse until I came along. Uh, and then she gave up her career to take care of me, but, um, which I just, you know, she sacrificed, her my dad sacrificed so much for for me, and I could never repay them enough, you know? So, uh, so she, uh, I, there's certain things I remember about her, you know? And, uh, she led a good long life. She was 93 when she passed away 10 years ago and uh, was driving up until she was 90, uh, just around town, you know. Uh, and I'm kind of glad that she stopped. Um, but, uh, you know, I I still miss her. I uh, The last few years of her life, she spent in a uh, nursing home because I just couldn't take care of her, her deep, you know, her, she had physical needs. She needed professional care. And ironically, I was the social worker at the, uh, one of the social workers where she, where she lived. And, uh, and I used to stop and visit her during lunchtime and after, after work, and uh, sometimes I'd stop up and she'd be playing bingo. She was the best bingo player. She was, she, if they had a professional bingo league, she would have been commissioner. She, that's how good she was. And, you know, she would be playing the bingo and she had all these cards. She memorized all the numbers. 
I mean, when she used to go for the real bingo, when she was able to, uh, she loved it. She'd have like 40 cards in front of her. I don't know how she was able to remember those numbers and mark them so fast, you know. But she loved it. She loved getting out and being with her friends. And she would win a few bucks once in a while, you know. But um, she just loved it. So uh, I I remember at the end, you know, well, we would talk outside of her room or in her room. And uh, she would walk me to the elevator. I was ready to go. I needed to catch my paratransit fan to go home every day. And she would uh, walk me to the elevator. I still remember being in the elevator and pressing the down button. And she would be standing outside with a tissue in her hand because she was crying. And she would give me a little wave. Love you. See you tomorrow. And uh, so I remember that. And uh, 10 years ago to this day, uh, I was there when she died. Um, and uh, it's it's sad because you remember, you know, how much she was a part of, of my life. And uh, she had such a caring heart, you know, and to be there when it took its... Uh, but it stopped beating, you know, it was just uh, I mean, something I'll never forget 10 years ago today. So, uh, so you know, Mom, I love you and I miss you. And uh, But, you know, I know she's I know she's up in heaven. She had a, uh, a saying, uh, many sayings, but uh, she always said, uh, when you're uh, when you when you're in heaven, you're so happy there that you don't want to leave. And if you're in hell, the devil won't let you go. <laughs> so uh, you know, I I dream about her sometimes, and uh, but uh, I hope she, I know she's very happy. Uh, she she had the most faith of anybody I ever knew in my life. Uh, just. Her faith was really strong, and uh, so I know she's happy. And uh, so I just wanted to tell you a little bit about her. Um, and you know, she is a big part of my book when I wrote, wrote my book here. You know why? Because she is, she is the unbreakable spirit. She she was she uh the book is a lot about her and my dad but really I think I was closer to my mom because my dad died when I was only uh, still in my teens and uh, my mom lived uh uh she lived uh a good forty years more after my dad died so. I think I was close. Plus, you know, there's a special bond between a, a, a mom and a special needs child. It's hard to describe, but there just is a bond, you know? And so, uh, so the story is really about her. I mean, because she's all through the story from when I was a little kid all the way to... Uh, to the point when she passed away. So, and and beyond, and beyond, the story ends, ends with her in mind too, so. So, uh, tomorrow we'll be back again, and uh, I hope you guys have a great day. Go Phillies tonight, and uh, make sure you tell the ones you love that you love them, and give them a big hug. Take care for now. Bye-bye.